Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech. So, as you probably have realized, a lot of people are kind of waiting around for Eldrick Moon to shake up standard. But not everyone is just waiting around. There are people out there still innovating and doing different things in the format. For example, Patricia McCammon, who recently took a top 8 finish at a SCG Standard IQ with Black White Aristocrats, which is the deck we're going to be breaking down today for Instant Deck Tech. So congrats to Patricia on her finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break it all down, if you enjoy this deck and want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, and leave a comment. Do whatever you can to support your deck, because whichever is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So this deck has all the ingredients of a good Aristocrats deck. So you got the Blood Artists. Well, not literal Blood Artists, because that's not legal and standard. But you got four Zulaport Cutthroats. So whenever a creature dies, you get to drain for one. Opponent loses a life, you gain a life. And you got two Pious Evangelists as a backup. So this one is a flip card. On its front side, it's a 2-2. Whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. So it's almost a Soul Warden type effect, except it doesn't trigger off your opponent's creatures. You can pay two and sacrifice another permanent. You flip it around to a 2-4 that has the Zulaport Cutthroat Drain Trigger. So you got a total of six Cutthroat effects in your deck. Plus, Pius and Vangel can sack something, which is kind of a nice bonus, because you do want sack outlets. Uh, speaking of sack outlets, the deck has a bunch of them. So that's the Aristocrat's plan. You get the Blood Artist effects, the Cutthroats, the Pious Evangel. You sacrifice a bunch of things using things like Ali Eternal Pilgrim, which is a pretty spicy one. It's a good 2-drop. It's a 2-3 with Death Touch, so it stops Sylvan Advocate. You can sack a creature to gain life equal to that creature's toughness by paying 1 generic mana. And then, if you get up to 30 life... You can pay one, a white and a black, and sack your creature to exile a non-land permanent. And it's possible in this deck, with all the drain triggers and so forth, plus Kalidus, which we're going to talk about in a minute, that you could get up to 30 life and start vindicating things. Nantucko Husk, you know what it does. A free sack outlet, it gets pumped up, can get in some damage. Kalidus, I put it on the sack outlet slide, even though it's really slow as a sack outlet, costing three mana to sacrifice only a vampire or zombie. Uh, but it gains some life, works with the lead, keeps you alive. And then Westful Abbey, another really slow sack outlet. But if you get enough creatures going and can sack it, it's really powerful because you not only get all the Zulaport Cutthroat, Pice Evangel triggers from the sacking, but you get the Ormondal, which attacks for nine in the air with haste right away. So what are we sacking? Well, Hangerback Walkers and Relentless Deads are the two main sackable creatures. Hangerback is a sweet one because you pump it up a bunch, you get all those Thopters, and then you can sack the Thopters as well. So you get a bunch of sackable creatures out of just one card. Relentless Dead gives you kind of infinite sack outlets because you can sack one, get back a Relentless Dead, sack another one, get back another Relentless Dead. So if you get enough mana, you can grind out a lot of value by just repeatedly sacking Relentless Dead to reanimate other Relentless Deads, get them back to your hand, all that fun stuff, and then Secure the Waste, makes a bunch of warrior tokens, can win the game on its own if you just play it on your opponent's end step and attack with everything, but you can also sack out those tokens for value as well. Liliana Heretical Healer, full four copies, so the deck really wants it, a really good value card for the deck. And then, holding everything together, we got a few copies of Read the Bones for some card draw and some languages to keep the board clear. Plus, you don't really mind all the time if your creatures die, because you get the drain triggers, you can get back your relentless deads, and so on. In the mana base, Caves of Koilos and Shambling Vents as the duels, 13 Swamps, and then of course the Westfield Abbey we already talked about. Sideboard-wise, is pretty sweet. You can kind of transform into a control deck rather than being this combo sacrifice deck. You can bring in four Declarations in Stone, three Anguish on Makings, and two Sorens, and pretty much be a black-white control deck. You got a ton of removal, you got Soren to finish the game, you got to secure the ways, so you're very close to the black-white control deck in Standard, as a sideboard plan, which is a really cool idea to be able to transform like that in some matchups. Uh, Griff Spoon, so you can fly in for some damage, and then Infinite Obliteration, I'm guessing mostly to hit Big Eldrazi, Dragonlord of Tarkas, things like that, really expensive threats that are hard to deal with. Anyway, that is Black White Aristocrats in Standard. Deck looks super spicy. I hope you enjoyed today's Instant Deck Deck. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you soon.